In this video, we're going to look at absolute cell referencing. But before we start, let's have a quick look at relative cell referencing just to show you what that is. So looking at this example here, if I was doing a very quick formula to work out the profit for each product, I would just go in equals selling price in B2 minus the cost in C2. When I copy that formula down, and if I go back and look more closely at it, I can see in um, cell D2, we've got B2 minus C2. When we jump down, it jumps down to row 3, jumps down to row 4. That is called relative cell referencing. I'm copying the formula down and it is copying row by row for me as well. Now let's go back to this idea of absolute cell referencing. So let's look at this example here. We have got monthly sales and we've got uh, to work out the commission due. We've set the rate separate. We could do a formula equals the monthly sales uh, times, I could just type in 10%, that's fine, press enter and then copy that down. But if, say, the commission rate changed to 20% or 5% or whatever, I would have to go back up and change the first one and then have to copy that back down. That takes a wee bit of time. Easier to be able to have the, the, the percent rate in a separate cell that could be changed very quickly. So if I was using the, the percent up here and my formula in D3, I could do equals, click on the monthly sales, multiply by the commission rate, enter. That's worked perfectly fine. But look what happens when I copy down. At this stage, it is copying down relatively, and this is not working. Let's have a look and see why. So the first uh, formula is fine. We've taken C3, the, the uh, monthly sales for C3, multiplied it by G1. That's worked perfectly. But look what happens in row four. It's jumped down to C4, perfect but it's also jumped to G2 and there's nothing in there. Looking at Fiona Green, and look at that formula, it's jumped, yes, it's her monthly sales, which is in C5, but it's now trying to multiply by G3. So this is coming down relatively. It's coming down row by row and that does not work. So let's try this again. If I click in D3 and I do equals monthly sales, I'm multiplying by the commission rate. Now, before I press return, I'm going to I'm going to um, press my F4 um, on the keyboard. If you have F4 on your keyboard and you click on it, you'll note as I've done that, it's now got a dollar sign before the G and a dollar sign before row one. If I toggle again, so if I press F4 again, it will jump to essentially G dollar one and then toggle again dollar G one again back to the beginning but let's look and see what we're doing here so let's have we want it to be dollar G and dollar one what that's doing is it's fixing column G and it's fixing row one that's why there's the dollar sign in front of it because I want that percent I want G1 to be fixed in place I want it to keep referring back to G1 even as I'm copying down through the rows so I fix that commission rate into place I'm going to press enter and the first um, commission due is correct now look what happens as we copy down what it's doing is it is taking in this example C4 but it's going back to G1. It's copying down relatively C5 for the monthly sales, but each time it is going back up to G1, that has been fixed in place. That is what's known as an absolute cell reference. Now, by having the commission rate in a cell on its own, you can very quickly make changes. So let's say the commission rate, lucky them, has changed to 20, so 20%, and look and see what happens to all the data in column D, updated automatically. Now, just while we're here, I want to show you, you'll, you'll notice a wee red triangle here. I have put the instructions in um, 
well it used to be called a comment box in the latest version of Excel it's now known as a note and just to show you what I did there is if you right click there you see that you can um, well, edit notes you can delete notes and if I didn't have a note I could right click and I could create a new note and that's where you can then type in the instruction so just to highlight that we've used the um, comments the notes for this example so moving on to the second example just another bit of practice we've got a full price we've set a discount for five uh, percent and we want to work out what the discount is what we're seeing here is click in cell c3 equals the full price in b3 multiply by the discount in G1 I'm going to press F4 and if for some reason that's not working on your computer you just have to manually type in dollar before the G and manually type in the dollar before the one row one press enter and then we can copy down and that's worked out for us and then to get the actual price I'm doing a very simple subtraction equals the full price minus the discount gives us the revised price and then I can copy that down. So that is how you use it. The dollar sign, absolute cell referencing, fixing a particular cell into place within a formula. There's something else you might be asked to do and that is to um, name a cell and this is actually very helpful if you're using absolute cell referencing. So we've got the same example here. This time up here in cell G1 and my name box is along here instead of it showing G1 I want it to show well in this case here commission rate com rate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on top of the G1 I'm going to press delete and then I'm going to type in I'm naming this this cell C O M M now I can't do spaces if you've got two words you have to do underscore and then we're going to put in here rate so I'm naming the cell commission rate. I'm going to press enter. And now you see when I click onto what was G1, it is now showing text instead. So if I've named a cell and I go back to work at the commission rate, I can go equals monthly sales times the rate which has been named. I don't have to now bother about these dollar signs because I've named, named that cell it does the same job. Press enter, the first one is done and copy that down. So if you name the cell you don't need to worry about adding the dollar signs. I'll just give you one more example there. Um, same idea that we are going to name the cell here, we're going to call it discount up to G1. We're going to press delete, type instead the word discount there and then press enter. Go up here equals the full price times the discount, no dollar signs, press enter, it's still fixed into place and down, down it goes, worked out for you and as with the last example, discounted price equals the full price minus the discount. The one thing I would say about this is once you have named a cell, you can't just go back up. So for example, say you want, I don't want that anymore, I want it back to G1. I'll type in G1 and press enter. It doesn't work, unfortunately. So if you have named a cell or you've made a mistake or you, you want it back to what it was, where you have to go along the tab, have a look at um, formulas and then have a look at name manager. And if you click on name manager, you'll then see all the cells that have been named and you can just simply go in and you can delete. And it's saying, are you sure? Yes, I am. Press OK. Um, and that's it. Then obviously you've, you've taken away it so it doesn't understand the formulas now so I would just have to quickly um, delete that. But what you've got up here is in G1 we're back to G1. So this is how we use absolute cell referencing and why we use it and also how to name cells. Hope that helps.